Hey folks, welcome to Shooting Up North. I'm your host, Lewis Carlin. We're heard right here on the Alliance Pro Wrestling Network. Thank you so much for joining me today. Before we get started, I just want to say thank you to everyone that's been watching the Alliance Pro Wrestling Network YouTube channel. I've been getting a lot of kind words from people that have been watching, that have been liking it, that have been enjoying the content. Really appreciate it. I want to give a shout out as well to one of our subscribers. Duffy is back. Duffy is back. I'd like to give you a shout out. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing to the Alliance Pro Wrestling Network YouTube channel. Really appreciate it. Okay, let's get into it. MLW's biggest match probably in the history of the promotion has been announced for October 2nd. The long running storyline of Alexander Hammerstone trying to get a shot at MLW World Heavyweight Champion Jacob Fatu is finally going to happen. It's happening October 2nd at Fightland. The MLW Openweight Champion, the long running Openweight Champion, Alexander Hammerstone, winning Battle Riot. Earned the title shot, says he wants it October 2nd at Fightland in Philadelphia at the 2300 Arena. So this will be, in fact, the biggest match, in my opinion, the biggest match in MLW history. And Alexander Hammerstone has been chasing Jacob for two for, for about two years now trying to get a title shot, and he's just been denied by Joseph Samuel. Samuel. Uh, he's been denied um, by Contra. He's trying to get the title shot. He wasn't able to get the title shot. And finally, winning Battle Riot 3, he earned himself a title shot, and he's going to take it at Fightland. This is going to be one hell of a match, and it's a title versus title match. Both titles on the line. So Jacob Fatu putting his openweight title on the line, as well as... Um, I'm sorry, Alexander Hammerstone putting his openweight title on the line. I think it said Jacob Fatu there or whatever. But Hammerstone putting his openweight title on the line. Uh, Jacob Fatu putting his heavyweight championship on the line. So title versus title. It's going to be just a fantastic match. This is the one that MLW fans have been waiting for. And it's finally happening at the 2300 Arena, October 2nd at Fightland. I can't wait for this one. Lots of people saying that Hammerstone is going to be the one to defeat Jacob Fatu and take that MLW heavyweight championship off him i disagree i don't think jacob for two is going to lose i think jacob for two is the man in mlw and he's going to be the man for quite some time he is clearly the most talented wrestler and the best wrestler that mlw has in my opinion and i don't think hammerstone who's extremely talented in his own right but i don't think hammerstone is going to be the one to take the title from jacob for two i say that because MLW made some really awesome signings. Uh, Davey Richards, uh, EJ and Duca, uh, those guys against Jacob Fatu for the MLW Heavyweight Championship will be just fantastic. I can see Jacob Fatu winning the Openweight title and then putting, say, um, I can see Jacob Fatu putting the Openweight title on the line against someone like Davey Richards. And then Davey Richards defeats him for the Openweight Championship. And then they set up the big match. Um, for the uh, MLW World Heavyweight Championship, Jacob Fatu having a vic yeah, having the victory over um, David Rich having the victory over Jacob Fatu that would really um, that would really tell a great story. Uh, it's just again, just is me just talking at the top of my head. Nothing, this is nothing set in stone, uh, but. Um, and EJ and Duca, another great, great, great talent there. Uh, he did fantastic in battle ride. So Jacob Fatu has has other challengers ahead of him for the MLW Heavyweight Championship. I, I don't see him losing. I'm picking Jacob Fatu 100%. I know a lot of people will disagree with me on that. They think uh, Hammerstone is going to be the one. I know Alicia Atut predicted that Hammerstone will be the one to defeat Jacob Fatu. But I'm going with Jacob Fatu to retain and winning the open weight title and using that to def using the open title to take a loss to somebody like Dave Richards or um, EJ Induka or like a Richard Holiday or something, and then setting up a big uh, title match uh, for the World Heavyweight Championship. So um, the Wild is going to be a fantastic match. I love the graphic as well that they put up. Uh, just face to face, title for title, this is Fightland. Uh, going to be just a tremendous, tremendous match on October 2nd. I'm waiting for it. I can't wait. But I'm picking Jacob for two. I'm making my early prediction right now. I'm picking Jacob for two. I know we're uh, we're a few months away from it, but I'm going with Jacob for two to retain. Uh, but it's going to be fantastic. Arguably, arguably, no, not, uh, there's no argument. It it will be the biggest match in MLW history.
And um, I just wish I could see it in person, but I'm sure it's going to be on Fight TV or um, maybe they'll give it away for free. I doubt they would give this match away for free, but uh, the fans at the 2300 Arena are going to be treated to one hell of a main event at Fightland as Alexander Hammerstone, the MLW Openweight Champion, puts his title on the line against Jacob Fatu and the MLW World's Heavyweight Championship, title versus title. It's going to be just a absolutely tremendous, tremendous match. Great job. But, you know, I, like I said, Hammerstone has been chasing him for two years. It was a really long, played-out storyline, finally coming to an end on October 2nd. And I personally, I can't wait for that. All right, so Tony Khan. Tony Khan has said that he has... A fun surprise. Let me pull up the report here. Ringside News it says Tony Khan. AEW has a pretty fun surprise for the Casino Battle Royal match at All Out. It says AEW is preparing their All Out. Uh, is preparing their All Out events for September fifth, and the company has a few surprises lined up. Um, Daniel Bryan, Brian Daniels, Danielson will, is reportedly making his debut for the company during that show, but they're planning a few big moments for fans. Tony Khan spoke about the women's casino battle royal match. He revealed that Riho is in the match, an announcement he previously um, was previously saving for AEW Rampage this week. Then he revealed that there will be a few more surprises in store. Um, he says something Pretty fun is planned for the surprise at the Casino Battle Royal match, but he did not specify what that was. I think we all know what that, I think we all know what the surprise is. Two words, Ruby Soho. That's the surprise. Uh, it's, it's been speculated that she's going to be making her, her debut at uh, AEW All Out in this um, Casino Battle Royal. Actually, Ringside News actually exclusively reported that Ruby Soho was slated to make her AEW debut at All Out during that match they were right about cm punk and i'm saying i'm thinking that they're right about ruby soho as well so i think ruby soho will be that surprise also i wouldn't um if we saw cassie lee and jessica mckay uh the formerly known as the iconics now known as the inspiration if we see them that would be a fun surprise as well but i think uh I think uh, Ruby Soho will be the, the fun surprise at the Casino Battle Royal. It's going to be a great show. Speaking of all, speaking of all out, uh, there are some people on on specifically Facebook saying that Darby Allen is going to defeat CM Punk. <laughs> They're saying Darby Allen. They said Darby Allen to keep the storyline going. Darby Allen is going to defeat CM Punk. CM Punk. There's a 0% chance that CM Punk is losing to Darby Allen at All Out. A 0% chance. It's that minus 100% chance that he loses to Darby Allen at All Out. His first match in seven years, he's not losing to Darby Allen. And that's all I'm going to say about that. There are a number of people saying that uh, Darby Allen is going to defeat him. One guy was even used the logic of, well, CM Punk hasn't wrestled for seven years. You know, he's, he's, uh, he's going to be, <laughs> he's going to be a little rusty in the ring. As somebody was saying, I mean, first of all, it's, it's professional wrestling. It's not the UFC. It's professional wrestling. Okay. And again, I'm going to say it one more time. It's a 0% chance CM Punk loses to Darby Allen at All Out, a zero percent. They'll shake hands afterwards. They'll hug each other afterwards. But um, CM Punk's going to hit the go to sleep, and uh, that'll be the end of that match. And uh, again, zero percent chance that uh, CM Punk loses to Darby Allen at All Out. New Japan Pro Wrestling. New Japan Pro Wrestling. Um, in Texas, is a New Japan Pro Wrestling in Texas update. Some really big matches have been announced. Um, September 25th uh, at the Curtis Cowell Center, Tom Lola takes on Ren Narita. That's going to be one hell of a match for New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, then we have Chris Bay, El Fantasmo, Hikaleo, Taji Ishimori, the Bullet Club. Great to see Chris Bay in there. Uh, Impact Wrestling's Chris Bay taking on Clark Connors, Juice Robinson, Leo Rush, and TJP. That is going to be just a dynamic, dynamic eight-man uh, tag team match. September 26th, we got Daniel Garcia, AEW's Daniel Garcia, who's just a one hell of a tremendous young talent. Uh, it's going to be a superstar, without a doubt, uh, taking on Jay White, and that's going to be a tremendous match. Clark Connors and Carl Fredericks, 
versus Will Ospreay and X. There's going to be a mystery uh, partner for Will Ospreay. Um, I'm not sure who it's going to be, uh, but Will Ospreay and X. Uh, so we'll see um, who Will Ospreay's um, partner is going to be, but that should be a, a tremendous match as well. Great to see Will Ospreay back uh competing uh, also for new japan pro wrestling uh josh alexander it's going to be this friday new japan pro wrestling strong josh alexander goes one-on-one -on -one with daniel garcia impact wrestling versus aew and they've wrestled each other in the past uh if you're not familiar with wrestling up here in ontario there's a great promotion called c4 wrestling out in ottawa Daniel Garcia, Josh Alexander had one hell of a tremendous match for C4 Wrestling up here in Ottawa, Ontario. I shouldn't say up here. I'm, I'm eight hours away from Ontario, but up here in Ontario, in Ottawa, Ontario, they had one hell of a tremendous match. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, Daniel Garcia defeated Josh Alexander. Uh, that part I know, but I'm pretty sure it was for the C4 Heavyweight Championship. Uh, and it was a great, great match between the two. And I don't know how long they're going to be given on New Japan Pro Wrestling Strong, uh, but um, it's definitely a match to tune in um, to watch Josh Alexander against Daniel Garcia. Uh, going to be a terrific, terrific, terrific match. Speaking of Josh Alexander, Alexander, I just want to say congratulations. If you didn't see the article, if you didn't see his uh, his tweet, um, after 15 years, Josh Alexander is finally able to make a full time living in professional wrestling. So congratulations, Josh Alexander. If anyone deserves it, it's Josh Alexander. Um, I I don't remember uh, the last bad Josh Alexander match that I've seen. I've been following his career for, for a number of years now. I've, I've seen countless uh, Josh Alexander matches up here in Ontario on the indie scene. And if anyone deserves to earn a living as a full-time professional wrestler, it's Josh Alexander. He's extremely talented, and he's branching out now. He's, he's shown up more on New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, he's all over the indie scene in the U.S. and in Canada. Um, of course, the X Division champion, uh, Impact Wrestling, Josh Alexander. So congratulations once again to the X Division champion, Josh Alexander, finally able to make a full-time living after 15 years in professional wrestling. And again, you deserve it, man. You deserve it. All right, Gable Stevenson. I want to talk about Gable, Gable Stevenson for a second. Uh, let me pull up the picture here. Uh, now, he tweeted this out a couple of days ago. Uh, I've been meaning to talk about it, um, but I'm going to talk about it now. Uh, he tweeted this out a couple of days ago. Uh, on um, August 29th, he tweeted this out. Uh, he says he's a modern-day Kurt Angle. That's this tweet. The you know, picture of him is modern-day Kurt Angle. You know. Okay, uh, Kurt Angle is one of the greatest. He, you, you, there's a you could put a good argument in there, calling uh, and you could you could you could put a good argument in for Kurt Angle, uh, for being one of the greatest wrestlers of all time. He just absolutely tremendous talent. He took the professional wrestling like that, and he's just absolutely one of the best of all time. One of the best of all time. Keeble Stevenson hasn't even taken a bump yet. He hasn't even uh, he hasn't even run the ropes yet, if if I'm not mistaken. I know this man wants to sign him. You know he's big on signing him. I think there's interest um, in the UFC as well. But McMahon is really trying to sign him. Um, but uh, but he hasn't run the ropes yet. He hasn't he hasn't been put in a headlock yet. He hasn't he hasn't um, taken an elbow drop from the top rope yet. Um, he he hasn't uh, he hasn't applied an ankle lock submission yet okay and and he's already calling himself the modern day Kurt Angle I, I think you better put the brakes on there buddy you know, no no doubt I'm sure you know you're talented amateur wrestler if you're comparing yourself to to an amateur wrestler Kurt Angle okay I understand but but um I think this was after the meeting with Vincent Man, you know and WWE expressing interest and then you're going ahead and calling yourself the modern day Kurt Angle Again, I think you need to put the brakes on. You know, I think you need to take a take, just take a seat. You know, and if you do sign with the WWE, I'm not saying he's not going to make it. He's very well could make it. But as I said, you haven't taken a bump yet. You haven't run the ropes yet. You know, before you do all that, you know, if if you, if you decide with to sign with the WWE, five years down the road, let's let's see if uh, you're actually the modern day Kurt Angle, okay, and and. Um, yeah, I, I don't think you. I mean, look at look at um, Patrick Bordeaux. I think uh, I'm not. If I get his name wrong. I, I'm, I'm. I apologize, but uh, he's being. Well, he didn't do it, but he's. He's. There were a lot of fans, a lot of people out there calling him the next Brock Lesnar. 
So he's an expert. He didn't, he didn't, and he didn't, um, he, he kind of shut that down. He didn't embrace that. He said, no, 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 I'm not the next Brock Lesnar. I'm, I'm Patrick Bordeaux. You know, and that's that's the way to do it. He's not the next Brock Lesnar. He can't come out and say that, that if he said I'm a modern day Brock Lesnar. But he didn't say that. He was like, no, 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 no. Um, I'm not the next Brock Lesnar. I'm I'm Patrick Bordeaux. If I get his name wrong, I I apologize. I, I'm pretty sure I got it right though. But but you know what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm trying to make a point here. You come out and say you're the modern day Kurt Angle if you haven't even run the ropes yet. That that's just 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 the way I feel. That's the way I feel on that. And um gonna end it now um i'm sure we we all know by now um i want to save this one for last uh daphne daphne um former um uh, wcw and impact wrestling star daphne um passed away at the age of 46 um i know she had um I said the wrestling world had become extremely concerned for Daphne's welfare following an Instagram live post last night and social media has been flooded with well wishes for the former WCW and TNA star throughout the day as fans and friends show their support to the former WCW Cruiserweight champion. Uh, now, I didn't see the, the Instagram video, but um, people are saying that she was talking about uh, possibly um, committing suicide. Again, I don't, I didn't, uh, I didn't um, watch the video. Um, I think I was reading somewhere where she said, uh, I think she wanted to donate her, her brain to, to Boston. I, again, I, I didn't see the video. Um, I, there's just things I read here and there, but, but the bottom line is whatever you're going through, men mental health is, is a serious, serious thing. You know, it, it, it affected me. You know, I, I've had mental health issues. I'm not going to, I'm going to, I'll come out and say it, but um, if, if you need help, if you feel down, if you feel you're not worthy, if you feel you're not good enough anymore, you know, talk to somebody, speak to somebody because you are good enough. Okay? You are good enough. Don't get down on yourself and say, I'm, I'm nothing. I'm garbage because you're not, you're not garbage. Okay. Mental health is a, is a very serious thing and it's best to talk to somebody get help. You know, if, if anybody that's listening right now going through some mental health issues, I'm on YouTube, right? <clears throat> you, you have, um, you can comment, um, put a comment on uh, my YouTube page and I, I'll gladly answer it. And we can have a, uh, we can DM each other. We can have a conversation, but there's hope. Don't, don't give up. Don't give up. And, and again, I, I just, I just, I just, um, I just wish uh, somebody was able to get to Daphne. Like I, I it doesn't, it didn't, doesn't specifically say that she committed suicide, but um, uh, it just says that she passed away. But um, like I know people were looking for her, trying to get a hold of her. Or the police were trying to, the police were called out uh, to her, but they were unable to find her, unfortunately, in time. And um, I just want to say rest in peace, Daphne. And uh, Again, if you need help, if you're battling mental health issues, it's it's I, I've been there. I know, I, I understand what you're feeling. I understand it, you know. But I um, talk to somebody, get on the phone, you know, talk to tell them what tell somebody what's going through your mind and talk to someone. You know, ask someone to meet meet you somewhere. You know, don't don't if if you if you if you're having thoughts like that. You know, don't stay alone. Go, go to somebody. Tell them what you're thinking. You know, because again, it's um, you're not you're you're not a nobody. You're somebody. You're not worthless. You're not garbage. You know, don't think there's no hope for me. There is hope for you. And uh, again, if if you want to reach out to me, if you if any of my listeners, any of my watchers, uh, YouTube uh, viewers, they need help, contact me. I'll talk to you. Uh, but once again, Daphne, I just want to say rest in peace. Um, she's 46 years old, way too young. And um, I offer my condolences to, uh, to um, the family of, um, 
uh, say Daphne, but her actual name is Shannon Spruill. So I um, want to offer my condolences to Shannon Spruill uh, and her entire family. And, um, and I'm just going to end it on that. I'm just going to end it on that. And uh, that note, I'm going to say thank you very much for listening. I'm Lewis Carlin. Again, please stay safe. And again, if you need to talk to someone, you know, reach out to me. Reach out to me on my YouTube page. Um, reach out to me on Facebook. Reach out to me on Twitter. You know, uh, on Twitter at Shooting Up North. Um, Facebook page, Alliance Pro Wrestling Network. You know, reach out to me. I'm on Lew Lewis Carlin on uh, Facebook as well. Reach out to me. I'll talk to you. And we can have a nice conversation. We can have a nice long conversation. All right. Well, I'm going to say thank you again. Uh, take care and please stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye.